This lecture is going to be an introduction to normal labor. We're going to introduce vocabulary and some terms as we go through this lecture. This lecture is not going to get you any points in and of itself, but what it will do is make the subsequent lectures about intrapartum events that much easier. So let's go through each step of normal delivery and kind of understand the vocabulary and terminology we're going to encounter in future lectures. Let's start with the stages of labor. Stage one is broken up into two parts, the latent phase and the active phase. The latent phase of stage one is from the beginning of contractions to when the cervix is four centimeters. Active phase is then from four centimeters of cervical dilation to maximal dilation at 10 centimeters. A latent phase should last about 20 hours for a first timer and last about 14 hours for a repeat offender. That is, the primiparous woman will spend about 20 hours in the latent phase with contractions until she's four centimeters, whereas the multiparous female will spend about 14 hours in the latent, latent phase experiencing contractions until her cervix begins to dilate. The active phase should occur within four hours. And the cervical change, which will be 1.2 centimeters of change per hour for a primi, and 1.5 centimeters per hour for a multi. Stage two begins when the cervical dilation is complete until baby is delivered. Stage three is baby gets delivered until the placenta gets delivered. And stage four, which really isn't a stage, is essentially when everything is done. But I want to explore a little bit more stage one because it's very important to understand what's happening. This graph will represent cervical dilation over time. The key moments being 4 centimeters and 10 centimeters. The latent phase will experience a long period of time where there are contractions, but there's no change in the cervix. Towards the very end of the latent phase, cervical change will begin to happen, slowly. And once it hits about 4 centimeters, a switch flips on. And all of a sudden, dilation occurs at a very rapid rate, and then will sustain at that level of duration. This is the active phase, when that flip gets switched. Active and latent phase together is stage one. Stage two continues on until baby is delivered. That was the stages of labor. Let's now talk about cervical changes. The cervix is going to go through a number of changes, and quite honestly, you cannot be asked questions about this. These changes are really felt by an advanced clinician in obstetrics. Someone who has delivered hundreds of babies can tell what these changes are and what they mean. Dilation is the first, effacement, softening or ripening, that is, the cervix will go from the feel of your nose to the feel of your lip, and position. It moves in the vaginal vault. They can't really ask you any questions about this, but they'll tell you these changes are happening. So you don't actually have to know a whole great deal about them. 
but one of the things that likes to come up on both the boards and the wards is that all of these changes are made by breakages of disulfide bonds. in collagen. It's how this change is able to happen so fast and then reverse itself. The cervix isn't elastic, it's just by breakage of disulfide bonds. And that breakage is mediated by prostaglandin E2, stimulated by engagement. Engagement either of a fetal head or by a balloon. Which means that in the course of normal labor, you can induce cervical dilation, cervical ripening, simply by, by inflating a balloon in between the fetus and the cervix and then tugging. So that's going to lead us into the next topic, fetal station. Because what is engagement, you're probably asking. So the uterus, vagina, the midpoint of the vaginal floor, in the opening to the vagina. When a fetus is not yet ready to deliver, they're all the way in back, station negative three. When the fetal head has engaged the cervix, the fetus is said to be at station negative two. By the time the fetus has entered the vagina, it is at station negative one. At about the midpoint is station zero. As the fetal head gets closer to the exit but is not quite there, the fetal station is plus one, and as it approaches the entrance to the vagina, fetal station is positive two. Engagement is the point at which the fetal head contacts the cervix and tells it to begin to ripen. One of the things you have to be able to tell is the fetal position. This can be done clinically, simply by feeling, but is often done by ultrasound since we're screening them anyway, but you do not have to do an ultrasound. This is done with the Leopold maneuver. What you want to assess is the lie and the orientation. If you're following a patient with ultrasound or you're doing the Leopold maneuver at 37 weeks, this is what you're looking for. You want to know if there is a longitudinal lie or a transverse lie. Transverse lie is abnormal. Longitudinal lie can be normal so long as it is cephalic. That is, the baby is oriented in the same axis as mom and the head is pointed down. The transverse lie, baby's axis is perpendicular to mom's. But a longitudinal lie may also be abnormal because if it is in a breached position, that is, baby's head is towards mom's head, it is in breach. Breach can then be subdivided into frank breach, complete breach, and footling breach. In frank breach, the knees are extended. In complete breach, the knees are flexed. In both frank and complete, the hips are flexed. In footling breach, one or both of the hips are extended, and what you'll see is a foot exiting the cervical canal. And if someone is in an inappropriate position, you can attempt external version. Where from the outside, you actually manipulate the baby around. You get their head positioned in the right way. You get them in the right line. Now they can just flip right back, but external version is a way that you can get the baby in the proper position to avoid C-section. Unfortunately, if they're in that abnormal position and all of a sudden they flip back to the bad spot, you may simply have to do a C-section in order to deliver. Finally, we're going to talk about fetal movement. You definitely will not get a question about this, but I want you to just be aware of the terminology. This is the uterus. Your cervix is now open. This is the vagina and the vaginal opening. Engagement occurs when the cervix is closed, the fetal head comes into contact and opens up the cervix. 
as the baby enters the vaginal canal, it's not going to shoot through like a missile. It has to go flexion and internal rotation. It's going to drill and worm its way through the vagina. And before it exits, before it becomes expelled, expulsion is the last movement, it will have to undergo extension and external rotation. So what then is the point of knowing about cervical change or fetal station? The use is in the Bishop score, which determines favorability how ready mom is for delivery, and how soon it will come. In an abnormal delivery, it will help you decide C-section versus vaginal delivery. You can see that their Bishop score is going to be ranked on five different criteria, ranked from a score of zero to three. The higher the Bishop score, the more favorable the delivery vaginally, the lower the Bishop score, the more unlikely vaginal delivery is to occur soon. So what we've talked about is sort of the normal changes that occur in labor. I want you to only be familiar with the vocabulary. If you can't define certain terms, it's okay. We're going to see all of these terms again in pathologic states. Your test, and what you're going to see on the wards, is going to assess your ability to figure out problems and how to fix them. This lecture simply introduces you to the topics. That is normal intrapartum events. We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.